All right, welcome back, everyone. Let's talk about two competi competing reactions, bimolecular substitution and bimolecular elimination. The biggest difference is the uh, elimination requires more steric uh, problem for carbon and substitution occurs when you have a no problem. So first you look at your uh, reactant. If your leaving group is here, then you have no problem attacking. If your leaving groups are here or here, then you have some problem. And anything more, such as, let's create something, like here, this tertiary carbon, if you have attachment additionally of a leaving group there, then the carbon attack here will be too serious, so you don't expect any substitution. So the primary, most likely, not always, but most likely, without any uh, reason, it will go to the substitution with the strong base. Then with the strong base that's bigger than OH, you expect elimination E2 because it's a strong base, bimolecular, when you have a secondary carbon holding uh, leaving group. And tertiary holding leaving group exclusively E2 with a strong base, even with the OH minus. Then, say you have a leaving group here. Let me make up a, a leaving group, sulfur, oxygen, something like this. But you start to have attachment on the beta carbon that also causing some steric hindrance so uh, the primary carbon may not have a good yield of SN2 if you have a bigger group then obviously that makes the substitution here very difficult if you imagine three-dimensional structure you know, because your base must attack from this side, back side, then the hydrogens on this branch is running into the uh, path of the base for back side attack leading to the SN2. But um, if that's the only reaction that's possible, then it should happen with, uh, you know, more heat energy and low yield. However, in this case, the uh, beta hydrogen here is open for E2, and there's no reason you can't do it. So E2 will be the uh, major with the uh, uh, you know decent size of the strong base. So that's thing about the um, substrate and steric between substrate and the base. Yes. So if you react this with, uh, say, you know, bulkier than hydrogen here, say this one, then you start to see elimination with these branches. So if uh, you have that and that, so we looked at the substrate, we looked at the base, they're steric and uh, steric as well but also uh, strength for the bimolecularity you need to check strength just uh, briefly speaking if the base was weak then you cannot have a bimolecular reaction and uh, nitrogen sulfur neutral is not considered as weak it's moderately okay um, you know group to attack with and um, anything else you can do promote elimination because this is a primary if you want you can provide heat so I, I, I mentioned the entropy some point earlier but um, 
I hope this is visible. Let's try uh, delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. Oops. Okay, I think it's visible. Sorry about that. I'm you know videotaping all myself all by myself. Uh, so the um, if enthalpy is negative value, it helps to make the Gibbs free energy negative, meaning the reaction will be spontaneous. So the more exothermic uh, enthalpy, the better uh, exothermic, um, the better uh, forward reaction you have. And uh, I said the uh, elimination has elimination reaction has positive value of the delta S when substitution has about zero about zero um, enthalpy so if you think about the fact that you have negative sign in front of this term there's a never uh, uh, you know is the case you have absolute temperature negative so positive and the elimination case is a positive so it will be positive for the elimination but there is a negative sign so this will be a negative that means when you increase the temperature you are making the term more negative that helps to uh, make the reaction more you know forward compared to the uh, about neutral I mean about zero um, delta S so the sensitivity to the temperature is not as much as elimination is so if you increase the temperature you'll have help from the um, entropy to make the elimination favored because it makes three uh, molecules instead of two so if that's the case now this will attack here the beta but you're not gonna just do it right you have to imagine the Newman projection around here using the stereochemistry I gave you. So um, here you can draw Newman projection. Uh, let's see the molecule from um, say this way. Your your eye located here. Your eyeball right there. So you have two hydrogens and then sticking down oxygen with the SO methyl of course lone pair but we don't need to show then you have the hydrogen I want that hydrogen to be you know anti right because there's no other functional group um, um, there's no particular attraction or repulsion you have to consider so you know you can rotate and see how unstable this is in the confirmation where you can have a reaction and we want the anti uh, you know position of hydrogen and their planar so remember the uh, p orbital you are forming out of this and out of that must be on the same plane so you got it if you do that from here you see this wedged one can come here with a big isopropyl group there and there you have an even bigger isobutyl group right there then you know this is not the best one but you know that's the only way this means your elimination is not very favored but it's possible so if the base gives electron here then you can make a double bond there and kick that out and you have this therefore you may have this carbon here right so carbon with a two flat hydrogen and that's one sp2 making bond with a carbon so this bond just got stronger because uh, sp2 and s is better than sp3 here and the s then you have a pi bond with the other carbon and they are like this if you turn it um, you can have isobutyl group one two is it right i think i have too many carbons 
Yes, I do. So I have to get rid of this carbon. This is uh, attached. One, two, three, and the four, and then this. Okay. Excuse me for that. Ignore. And here you have isopropyl group. And that's the product. In this case, there is no special um, geometry issue. Um, so. SN2 is not easy, E2 is also from the unstable one, so honestly speaking, this question, it can go anywhere, but you have a heating, so I prefer elimination. So this is one type, if you remember, you have a R reacting with a certain condition and reagent, then do you know how to, then you know you have to imagine the structures and understand all the factors uh, related to and there you are then let me make up another uh, question here this looks straightforward very typical um, E2 because when you find the base there's a strong base and the base has uh, two carbons then your acid is right here, the carbon. But you have to think about steric. So when the carbon center has this two, these two carbons, it's a secondary, and there is a you know beta position, big group. So it's a pretty sterically hindered. So even OH minus, you're not clear, but there are two carbons, so creating big steric uh, effect uh, for the um, even activation energy. So it's uh, not easy to uh, attack on the carbon, so you have to look for the beta hydrogen. And you have a beta hydrogen here, and there are two beta hydrogens over here, and there are three, and which one's your target? And to help you, there is a heat going on, so like we uh, talked about there, you have uh, help for elimination. So this is absolutely E2, but which one is the issue? And I'm not going to just do it because it's a special case. It's not a simple chain with a just carbon-hydrogen. You have a ring structure. So when you have, a, remember, functional groups, it's like more than just a living group or uh, a ring structures, uh, you have to be careful. Also, you know, the attachment on the beta carbon is just some factors you have to always remember. So please take a memo and use them whenever you uh, come up with the mechanisms. So your mechanism skill is very important always. Any type of problem you deal with, that's important, I told you. So after this, I'll show you this type. And in solving this, I told you, you have to go back th to this and you must use uh, mechanism skill anyway, right? that's what I meant so you cannot solve this way let's put them in the um, regular cyclohexane three-dimensional structure so I want to have this carbon as this one that's easy for me then the coming up is equatorial with the um, isopropyl group and there is uh, you know dotted hydrogen that's axial hydrogen perfect so you know you know uh, the um, axial and axial they can be uh, anti periplanar and and you can have elimination going on but let's don't make a decision yet so this carbon it's going clockwise so from here remember these lines are coming out and those are in so from here clockwise is this way so you're coming out of the paper so one two one and two this carbon is the one with the bromine and bromine is held by the line that's going down here on this carbon you have axial and equatorial so equatorial is down and that's bromine so this is a very stable conformation of cyclohexane because two big groups are on both equatorial so that's perfect very stable however this stable has no reactivity with this hydrogen nor with this hydrogen even 
not with this equatorial. None of them are on the same plane. So to make this one lenar, you can flip, we said. Then you bring this one up as you push this one up like this. This goes axial and that goes to the equatorial. But then you know, bummer, you don't have a uh, axial, so you may not have a reaction. This goes to the, you see this upward shape came down, so it goes down to the uh, axial, so bromine on the axial. Then uh, the hydrogen's here, but we don't have to show because that's alpha hydrogen, that's not even so much positive. So little acidity here. And there you have axial, equatorial, that's not on the plane with the bromine. So this one's active, only one. Then you know your base with the heating help of the uh, entropy will attack here and this and this. You go to the transitional state, then pulling off the hydrogen, making this carbon sp2 flat carbon and double bond with a p coming and then here will come when bromine is leaving so the other hydrogen equatorial goes down because it's going away so more repulsion here pushes the hydrogen down so you have a flat structure so how do you draw that you draw a double bond first and it must be flat from the top but we have a side view so we you know it looks like this so this carbon is right there and this carbon is here and that carbon is there sp2 and that carbon is here it's flat from the top and this hydrogen is sticking out and the hydrogen here it's gonna stick out and they're flat and these lines are going actually in then you have these two left so it's here up and down and you connect with the one, two, three lines behind the paper. So one, two, and three. Then you still have this one right here. And still hydrogen there. So hydrogen down, isopropyl up. Therefore, if you um, examine the product from the top, you see uh, the cyclohexane with the isopropyl right here. And next carbon has double bond. And if you compare this to the original one, you know that double bond is not here, but there. So. When you get the more substituted double bond that's here, you know, if you have double bond there, you're going to have one, two, three carbons, you know, their electrons becoming stable, but this way you have only two carbons, electron getting stabilized, so this one is Hoffman elimination, not the Zaitsev product is the major. So unusual case, it just happened, it's because of the, uh, you know, the uh, ring structure. That's why I'm telling you, whenever you have non, just, plain, straight, simple chain, you have to actually imagine the three-dimensional structure and draw the mechanism carefully with all the considerations. That mechanism skill is very, very crucial. And also another thing is you, you created Hoffman product, not even using you know T butyl oxide kind of big group. So it's not always necessary okay, for Hoffman. And that can be tricky as well. So let me bring in another example here. It's different type now. Like I said. I'm trying to show you this type and that need eventually some mechanistic skill. All right then, uh, think about it. What do you really need? Then 
I said you have to compare reactant and the product, find out what type is possible. This is not substitution one or two. It's not addition. It's not I even rearrangement or anything. It is basically elimination. So is it E1 or E2? We haven't done E2 in very detail, but you know what E2, E1 is, right? Uh, E1 or SN1 happens when you have a when you have a really weak base that doesn't attack. So you have to provide heat. Remember? Then you have other things like the carbocation when you uh, you form when you break the bond. So and break the bond by giving the electron pair to the better place, meaning more stable place. So either carbon or oxygen takes, obviously oxygen is better with the tassel group, with the resonance and everything. So you both give, you give both to the oxygen and then carbon will be positive and is that stable. We said that the secondary carbocation is a minimum and it is. So yeah, it's possible if it's E2, that's good too because secondary has already some steric hindrance so you don't attack carbon with a decent size bigger than hydrogen or even, you know, to be safe bigger than one carbon base. And also you have, uh, you know, beta carbon having some uh, uh, carbon ch chains m making uh, alpha target more sterically hindered so uh, it's also possible to have E2, then which one you prefer? Thumb of the rule, always E1, if it's possible, you may have SN1 as well. So it's not easy to separate these two. Those are the next reaction I will talk about on this video, but not easy to, you know, choose. So if you have choice, avoid E1. So I would go for the E2. Also another reason, if you do E1, what happens is, let's try, you give electron, this is E1, okay? You need the mechanism skill. So remember, we will go back to the mechanism. So you know typical E1 mechanism, you break. Whatever the base you can imagine, what, what would you use? Well, E1, you need heating. Something neutral, right, like this. And then for elimination, you, might, you may need something, you know, sterically hindered. That's better. Although, it's not always making E1 without SN1. They're always coming together, almost. But heat is somewhat separating E1 from SN1 because of the entropy factor so I would use that, add that then as soon as you form carbocation with a stable leaving group that was the another um, requirement to have a unimolecular reaction then you have a secondary carbocation then you know it's shipped it always shifts to make the structure better. Now, what's the better carbocation? It's the carbocation with a more substitution to stabilize more electrons on neighboring carbons. So if you move hydrogen here, we talked about this briefly, then you get the, not the charge itself is shifting, but Instead of one hydrogen here, now you have two, so it's becoming full valence carbon, so no charge. But this carbon has three, and the fourth one was there, but it's gone. So you have only three, its own electron, so positively charged. Then, due to the heat and the bulky base, this one, rather than attack the carbon, it will attack the beta hydrogen. And which one? If you think about, none of them has a serious aesthetic issue, okay, and uh, they are both 
they're all available for the uh, reaction I'll show you uh, uh, in a minute so you may attack all of them but which is the best if you attack this guy you form double bond here if you attack this guy you form double bond there and you should be able to imagine which is a better product the one that has a more um, substitution so the one that has a more substitution is not this guy it's not even possible you can only have either this or this well the other one is the same thing this one but if you flip the molecule they are identical so you have you expect two products and these are better than this this has a two and that has a three groups of electron pools you stabilize using sp2 double bond um, carbons so these are SN1 products since you have that you know that's not SN2 ah, sorry E1 product but you know that's not E1 product by trying mechanism you can eliminate E1 so that's another reason therefore we will know it's all E2 then typically E2 you need to remember these typical conditions so for E2 you want heat yes for elimination to be bimolecular you want some strong base for uh, making sure having elimination not the uh, substitution SN2 on the secondary carbon more than hydrogen is enough but to ensure you know two carbon is enough or even isopropyl one more carbon making the carbon center secondary that creates enough of a trouble for carbon but the problem is this is a ring structure so we must double check our structure so how was the structure of the um, cyclopentane cyclopentane looked like either up or down let me try down so envelope shape and if I put um, this guy up on this carbon you know anywhere you can put but let me put it here O T S good leaving group on the uh, pseudo axial and uh, there is a hydrogen here but where is your beta beta is here another one coming down and there is there are two hydrogens and I hope you remember if you build this one and see a Newman projection from this and this angle from the previous um, a while ago video uh, these are eclipsed but they are staggered okay um, okay I'm sorry I'm missing something so when you have this guy here then counterclockwise you have a methyl group so it's right there and you have uh, one of those not indicated not uh, neither white or dash so any of them are methyl but anyway these guy this hydrogen is not or even that hydrogen is not uh, the um, not the um, 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 coplanar they are staggered you have to remember but they are coplanar so you can have elimination therefore you can attack here and have elimination but is it really impossible to have that one reacting What if you make these eclipsed by making this the eclipsed and making this one pointing up or down? Let's say you did this. Then you have 
tarsal group and methyl group comes eclipsed but not the hydrogen so yeah you can't however we arbitrarily put methyl group here right if they specify this one was up methyl group then it's this guy with a you know sin location to the tarsal group in that case it's not possible if you put the methyl group in anti position if that was the case they gave you dotted line right then um, your flipped structure will have methyl group here but hydrogen there now these are eclipsed so they are on the uh, same sort of um, uh, plane so then the base can get your base ethoxide can attack here and you can create this double bond so those two double bonds let's try and compare which one's which one's a better um, product here you have double bond formed the next one you have uh, CH3 that one you form the double bond right here then you know this is more stable double bond the more stable product is major unless you have a more serious uh, steric issue or bond dissociation issue for the transition state but it doesn't look like it it's about same type of a hydrogen so the product is more stable lower activation energy and so on this is your major okay major so that's another type then the given answer is not that one it should be this one how do you make it So it's not the Zeitz up, it's again Hoffman that's what you want as the product. So the uh, geometry doesn't complicate to give Hoffman as a major like a previous example. So all you have to do is, if you remember, give more steric issue. So create big base as your E2 base. Then the height the oxygen prefers hydrogen away from the methyl group so um, you get this one as a slight uh, major okay this is another unusual E2 I'm sorry elimination uh, situation you have uh, also different type of problems you don't know the reactant you know the condition and the product so if you approach the problem with a simple memorization you will fail again so be careful in uh, analysis and this and this you can see okay not um, substitution it could be but you know you have a heat and you have a somewhat big base you probably did not add methyl group here or something because that's a secondary carbon it most likely is elimination so if it's elimination then will it be SN1 or SN2 well, if it's SN1, when you have double bond here is the issue. You know, you could have a more substituted double bond with a rearrangement because as, what am I saying, sorry about that, E1 or E2. If you have um, E1, then you could have always, you know, you need molecular reaction forms carbocation then you can rearrange right and if you look at the product there's no reason why at the stage of carbocation on this backbone you wouldn't rearrange 
so it may not ascend one it is probably that it's not e1 it most likely is e2 but e2 requires a strong base we don't have a strong base but you know the basicity the strength of the base increase as temperature rise so the E2 might be not as fast, but it is possible. So I will go with the E2 based on my analysis. Even when you know it's E2, there are two possible uh, reactants, right? So if you think about it, you can have a leaving group here or you can have a leaving group there. Then you go back to the mechanism skill. If it's E2 with this, where would you attack? Well, E2 requires beta hydrogen. It's here and the here. And this one is not tertiary um, alcohol. Therefore, you don't expect Hoffman that much. And there's no limitation and no particular uh, polar functional group complicating reaction. It's just a normal chain. Therefore, you get major reaction here to get the more substituted product double bond, which is here, not there. Even if it's not the major, if you're not sure, you know it will be significantly happening here as well as some there. So there is a, some complication about the isomer, you know, major isomer. But here, if you look at it as a E2, there's only one type of uh, two uh, beta hydrogen. So your elimination is only occurring here and you get exclusively that, no other complication. So I'll prefer this one. Then you are confirmed that even with the heat, it doesn't go because it's primary carbocation. There's nothing else that can stabilize, you know, a carbocation on the primary in this particular structure. So doesn't leave. It wait until the weak base became strong enough with the you know accumulating heat energy and bang, then you push that out and you get that as the main product. Even when you thought about E1, you know based on the product you can think of these two uh, substrate. Then, like I said, you lose then your carbocation here is not the most stable carbocation. It will move the electron from the tertiary and you come up with the tertiary carbocation. Then your beta hydrogens are here, two of them, and six of them here. And then best elimination product is here from the E1. So it's not that one. You see the E1 anyway doesn't work. Okay, let's quickly cover SN1 and E1 reaction. First, let's take a look at the given um, structure and study. This is a substrate. So the substrate has this electronegative atom that causes potential acidity on the carbon then um, along with the other two oxygens sulfur can be also um, an acidic sorry about this this is partially negative so oxygen being partial negative you know oxygen took electron away from the neighboring group that's how we know they are acidic right then um, when you imagine um, base gave the unstable electrons to these acidic um, atoms see which one is a better one um, you, if you give one you can break this one electron bond going to the uh, oxygen and oxygen being negative without this 
so oxygen negative and that's it right there's no resonance or anything so very unstable like more than hydroxide some alkoxide if you give electron here instead of breaking you can break here then this sulfur gets single bonded oxygen negative but that one has a one resonance so that's better so breaking this one is worse breaking this way is better however if you think of third case the with a second um, acidic atom the base comes on the carbon or the hydrogen then you give electron to the oxygen then the oxygen has two resonance structures that makes um, the carbon or hydrogen better um, acid with a more stable conjugate base so if you have strong base like electronegative oxygen to be strong it must be negative most of the time without you know much resonance or anything or even neutral nitrogen sulfur can be strong enough um, nucleophile so they are able to attack the carbon say you have um, oxygen negative as a base then you check the sterics to tell whether the target will be carbon or hydrogen so the carbon if you check it's a secondary with the two neighboring carbons and also the beta carbon has um, two uh, carbons so it's pretty um, crowded so unless you use hydrogen even hydrogen uh, on the oxygen minus may have significant elimination especially if you give some heating going on with the you know hydroxide you may get the um, E2 is major not SN2 so you have chance for S, uh, E2 more than SN2 with the most of the uh, bases except the uh, you know soft uh, base such as a sulfur with one negative charge in the big atom has um, so-called uh, polarizability uh, that also is a uh, a subject for a um, beat level video so anyway you have to know the uh, outcomes of sulfur or the big uh, soft base will able to attack the carbon especially when leaving group is um, another one big one soft one like a bromine iodine such so yeah and when you start to drop the um, basicity you start to have more chance for unimolecular especially when your carbon with a leaving group good leaving group is a secondary it's not primary so uh, say you dropped it significantly by using not even nitrogen but um, oxygen neutral one with the various size for the sake of discussion leave the size of the R uh, variable so when you have um, say uh, heating going on your s single bond with the leaving group breaks at the high temperature that's because the secondary tertiary does it better but still this step is a rate determining step of all the uh, following uh, reactions that's because you are just breaking bond alone and other uh, steps you can check later always you have something forming bond and you may break and when you form bond you get help because bond formation is um, exothermic from the base so if you break that off you get this one going away therefore these three repel more and less repelled by this group here so they are coming to the plane with only three bonds right so you get the flat sp2 carbon with the empty p orbital right here coming out of the sorry
coming out of the paper, going into the paper, that's the two lobes of the P. And there you have CH3 and H. And that, let me just leave it the way it is. CH3 and hydrogen and CH3. And this single bond is freely rotating, trying to find the most stable um, conformation. You have to remember this. I've been talking about this a couple of times. Whenever you form carbocation, you have to ask, is this the most possible stable carbocation? You have to ask. Then you look around the chain, this is a secondary with the two carbon groups of the uh, electron pool get stabilized by sp2 positive carbon but there you can make tertiary you can try all these groups right I, I showed you before but when you move hydrogen away you can create tertiary so this one moves to the next door and the carbon becomes sp2 and by losing electron it is now carbocation so goes this way and now this one with a two methyl group is carbocation. Then this one has now two hydrogens. So when this hydrogen coming over from the, you know, see the dotted line from below the page swing to this carbon, pushing these up. So I'm gonna show it this way. Hydrogen down there. And then that's this hydrogen came over and this hydrogen pushed up so it's still out here and uh, you know methyl group is here so I should have drawn these two closer but in order to show you how this convert to that I sort of intentionally did it that way and that is more stable so they don't go back much and that is the major more stable intermediate more stable intermediate so from here I have to explain that again this sp2 flat carbon has 50% chance reacting from the top and the bottom so you have chance to get racemization so let's try to show you that better, uh, let me put this one in the um, Newman protection. So say you stand here and your eyeballs right there looking at it this way so you can see these two carbons overlapped. So here is your front carbon. Then hydrogen comes here and CH3 here and another CH3 right there. Then this thing is on the paper while this one was above, the hydrogen is below. This methyl group dissecting these two, so it's right here, that's methyl group. Then the hydrogen is eclipsed with a uh, methyl group. And then you know that's not very stable. You can freely rotate around the single bond here to find the better one and you have a Gauss interaction you have eclipsed so um, let me show you P orbital first this P orbital is right here you know this line this line is here and the other line here is um, uh, between the two carbons this direction and they're flat and P orbital is this way then uh, this is the lobe with the shaded so how do you make this one a little better it's spinning around a bit away from this not too close to this guy because it's a, uh, another metal group so let me just uh, move this one this way so you have metal group hydrogen 
and the, this methyl group right here, then you have a methyl group and the hydrogen. So they are sort of, uh, you know, uh, not eclipsed. They're all partially staggered with a still gauche. You cannot avoid gauche if you try anything else. You still have a gauche. And if you look at the p orbital, perpendicular, so it's still now, you know, this way, but still there. So, um, if you have the R group that's small, if our R is a small and temperature is not too high, So no one knows what's too high. So when you do experiment, you should uh, optimize the temperature by trying um, different temperatures to uh, get the more SN1. If you have to, uh, if you want E2, you have to raise temperature. But like I said, if you want elimination, it's better doing E2. If E2 somehow doesn't give you the rearranged uh, and uh, the double bond then you know you have to use other strategy that you will learn later on but anyway say you want a uh, substitution then that's for now what you can do then the small base and the weak base for the unimolecular able to attack 50% this way 50% that way. It's not going to be really 50-50 in this case though, as you can imagine. You know, it's a little more opened up and that one's closer to the hydrogen. But anyway, uh, you get the two isomers about 50%. So, uh, right attack, left attack. When this one attacks, these two pushed away this way, then you get the product having sp3 carbon center with the oxygen bound, the lone pair turn into the sigma bond, and oxygen donated electron away, so it's a positive. And this one's still staying like this. That's from the right. From left, let me draw it smaller. If you come this way, it will be eclipsed because they will push it that way and eclipse and push it that way, eclipsed, and this will be eclipsed. That's why I said the uh, transition state is very high energy and it's not going to be 50 50%. You're going to have a more of this isomer. So then uh, here you have uh, oxygen bound, excuse me for the uh, squeezing things in. And the hydrogen, the R group, the small one, positive charge. So it's bound here. Then the methyl group pushed away hydrogen as well. And in front you have these groups still there two methyl group and over here hydrogen so please notice this is hydrogen this is the attacking group eclipsed 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 so they have to turn uh, then the the two methyl groups here and here hydrogen there so this big group like to turn but uh, you want to have the small hydrogen between these two, not the big group. So you turn this way a bit, you end up getting two methyl groups, an oxygen positive with the R group, and you have hydrogen here this methyl group coming right here oops sorry about that this one is actually bound here and 
this one's actually hydrogen, right? Sorry about that. Yeah, so you found some better staggered conformation, and that's another one. The reaction is not done, but if you can, please assign the um, absolute configuration to see they are actually opposite uh, stereoisomer. This, these have only one chiral centers each. This is not chiral center with the two same groups. And the carbon behind has all different groups. So chiral center. And this one on the carbon behind is the highest atomic number, one. Hydrogen is four. So you stand here to determine Rs. Then you have this carbon and this carbon, and that has only three hydrogens on it. This one has a two methyl groups, so this is number two, and it's a three. So from number, uh, away from number four, standing here, you connect number one, two, above the paper, down, it goes this way, so it is R configuration. So the attack from the right gives you R configuration for the carbon behind, which is this guy. So after losing this first, without rearrangement, if you attack the carbon right away from the right, then you get this R configuration for the carbon behind. This one has number one here, number two on top, number three here, and number four is over there, so you stand here. You look this way. And carbon, uh, oxygen number one is on the paper, number two is above, number three goes this way, so it's counterclockwise. Indeed, this is S. We knew it because they are mirror I image from the different attack, so uh, we just practiced. If you get the equal amount, it's a receiving mixture. And if you actually measure optical activity, uh, as you see here, you may not get 50-50. So the solution may not be optically inactive, it still will be active. Also, uh, from this intermediate, both in, uh, sorry, this intermediate, you can do elimination if the R group is big and you have high temperature. Then you think about which uh, hydrogen, beta hydrogen you attack. So with respect to with respect to the carbon behind, the beta is um, this carbon above here. Okay. From this carbon, this is the beta, and that's the beta hydrogen. So this is the beta, and this is your beta. So which one makes a more stable um, double bond? This one double bond if you re by removing uh, this hydrogen you form double bond here then you get only one substituent on the double bond if you remove this one then you get double bond there and you after all have one two three carbon electron pool getting stabilized by sp2 carbons so that's better only if you can align this hydrogen to this coplanar right now this is not. So again, you turn a little bit, and this is a more stable conformation. And also you have a hydrogen lined up. So perfect. So your uh, bigger base is weak, but the positive charge on the carbon makes uh, this one more polarized, and there is uh, acidic carbon, so the weak base can act as a base and give electron then this electron pair goes to the double bond area which is carbon between this and uh, behind what I'm trying to show you is after turning this a bit you can line up this hydrogen to this p orbital and base comes and attack Sorry. then electron goes to the bonding area you form double bond okay, that's what I mean here and try again if you can't get it but anyway by removing this hydrogen um, 
oh sorry here remove this hydrogen these come that way and eclipsed with the methyl that comes and eclipsed with hydrogen because you are losing this um, electron so you're gonna get methyl group still staying there but new methyl group came over here and another methyl group came over there and that is double bond by the p orbital you just formed by removing the hydrogen and there was another one there and when you have a pi bond it's flat molecule and it's gonna be something like two methyl groups and another methyl group and hydrogen there you have um, the elimination product as E1 product the SN1 continue but um, I'll show you with uh, the other case after rearrangement the more stable one forms in higher concentration so you have a more uh, abundant product coming out of this then you have an empty p orbital there and you need to align one of these two hydrogen to that so uh, if you rotate you could and I hope you can imagine the um, Newman projection but the best one is having um, this one rotated a bit and having these two on the paper then uh, this one going down like this metal group and both hydrogen spreading like this would be more stable in the Newman projection you can see the way it is from this angle two carbons right and behind you have a hydrogen see this hydrogen between these two and that hydrogen is below and the methyl group is kind of a you know eclipsed right here that's not stable so I want this one away from this so I spun so I'm showing the Newman of this guy from this angle so I spun uh, the carbon behind so this one comes down so this way and two hydrogens and you still have these two methyl groups like that and they're not eclipsed none of them eclipsed and you have a p orbital right there then you know this one not this is stable most stable but it's not active because none of the beta hydrogens these two are aligned with the p orbital here so you have to switch by rotation so rotate again then you finally have active group here this guy and hydrogen this guy coming over and this guy coming down here and then two methyl groups right there in front carbon with the p orbital so that's lined up now with the potential p orbital coming out of this uh, sigma bond on the uh, behind the carbon so for e1 already carbocation in the in the most stable form and the bulky base, weak base, uh, at the elevated temperature using lone pair attack and then the electron come toward the front to overlap with this guy form double bond by removing it these two will come down and form a flat molecule then you have the final E1 product so this is the same as this in this particular case even before or after rearrangement you got the same elimination product
not always the case though so you have to uh, always um, rearrange first because internal change is faster than see the intermolecular attack to be SN1 product or even E1 product so in order to be SN1 or E1 this must collide on the right carbon or right uh, hydrogen but internally it can shift quickly and turn into this and this is stable so it stays long and then your base find the beta hydrogen or the carbon top and the bottom in this case you have a two same groups so you don't have a racemization or different isomers I'm not gonna show you the mechanism but when you attack your SN1 product will be basically the one with the oxygen R group right then you have two hydrogen and the methyl group and this one still is very acidic with a you know par big partial plus charge on the hydrogen due to the oxygen being positive pulling more electron so this becomes more acidic therefore the uh, the leaving group the conjugate base or um, the um, weak base you have or solvent will be able to act as proper base to remove the hydrogen and giving you the E1 product after rearrangement and this is the ether coming from this so this SN1 product is different from these SN1 product in terms of regio isomer because those ether forming right here but this ether is right there after rearrangement and which is major this is the major this could have been the major E1 but they are same so in this case this is only you know elimination product how can you control them with a more temperature E1 with a bigger base maybe this one lower temperature smaller base but uh, like I said these are always coming together with a slight uh, ratio change so I hope uh, you can get the feeling of um, SN1 and E1 how they are different but as a unimolecular how they are different from the bimolecular reaction SN2 and E2 then we tackled um, SN2 and E2 difference so uh, this should be um, giving you some sense of these competing four reactions okay so this is the last uh, quick practice this is the, one of the three types um, I've been showing you this one you, sh you, sh you, sh you see um, reactant and the product and you don't know what condition you want to convert this way then you have to find out because uh, you cannot use a mechanism skill without the uh, uh, reagent and conditions you have to find out possible uh, reaction type then you can deduce the reagent for each type and then you can apply a mechanistic skill to see if that guest um, condition indeed gives you that so first you see that's not elimination then you have uh, for now substitution unimolecular SN1 or SN2 then you also notice the carbon holding the leaving group is not holding the replaced group which is probably nucleophile on the same carbon right it's on different carbon so you notice that there is a rearrangement re reaction happened So rearrangement is always possible from SN1, not SN2. So SN2 may not. It's not absolutely not. It may not be the case. You'll see why when we do um, addition reaction. 
But also, when you guess SN1, you must know SN1, the arrangement is always from less stable carbon to more stable carbon. So, this carbon is a secondary carbon. If you lose it, that's carbocation. In order to get the nucleophile on it, this must be a your carbocation so your rearrangement is actually from the less stable to the more stable so indeed this is fine okay so it's SN1 if it's SN1 now you know the condition you need is heat and you need a stable carbocation minimum secondary you have you gotta have a good leaving group you have and you need a good solvent but before that you need a base nucleophile, this guy. So CH3O minus, what do you think? This is a strong base. If you have that, it's not going to be SN1. It will be E2 or SN2. Okay, so what do you want? You want weak base, so not the negative ion. Therefore, you put hydrogen and make it neutral there you have and that you can be you can use it as a um, um, solvent as well as a, you know nuclear file so that's it it's a product a good solvent so that's your answer compared to that is when you have this and you have this guy then you know your SN1 doesn't work because rearrangement is from the more stable to the less stable. That's when you need probably SN2 or you know other uh, strategy, not SN1. Because again, it's because carbon shift, carbocation shifted from the more stable tertiary to the less stable secondary. So. Um, that it's coming up until then have a good day